Good afternoon. brothers and sisters in Christ, let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious God and our Heavenly Father, we gather here this evening, firstly to give you thanks for what you have done and will continue to do for us as your people. We ask you, Lord, to bless this island of Montserrat. Bless its leaders, bless its, the citizens, the residents, the visitors. As we celebrate the legacy of this nation, as we meet at the 8th National Awards and Honor and Awards Ceremony, we thank God for those who have laid the foundation. We thank God for them. Those who would have been, would, those who have been recognized tonight, we place this function along with them in your hands. And we also pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we will accomplish what we came here to do. So when it's all said and done, it will be for the nation building, the good of the people, and to you, your honor and glory most of all. We ask, it, we ask this in and through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us when we pray to say, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Master of Ceremony for the 8th National Honors and Awards, Mrs. Laureen Lewis. Her Excellency the Governor, Mrs. Sarah Tucker and Mr. Tucker, the Honorable Premier and Minister of Finance and Economic Management, Mr. Joseph E. Farrell, the Honorable Deputy Premier and Minister of Communication, Works, Labor and Energy, Dr. Samuel Joseph, the Honorable Speaker of the Montserrat Legislative Assembly, Ms. Charlene White, the Honorable Minister of Agriculture, Lands, Housing and the Environment, Mr. Cranston C. Buffon, the Honorable Attorney General, Mrs. Sherry Jemmett Rodney and Mr. Rodney, the Honorable Leader of the Opposition, Mr. Paul J. Lewis, other Honorable Members of the Montserrat Legislative Assembly, most distinguished national honors and award honorees, most distinguished national honors and awards recipients and their special guests, chairman and members of the National Honors and Awards Committee, former premiers, chief ministers and members of the Montserrat Legislative Assembly, Father Joel St. Rose and other members of the clergy, Supreme Court Justice, Justice Dale Fitzpatrick, Director of the Public Prosecution, Mr. Oris Sullivan, Permanent Secretaries, Acting Commissioner of Police, Mr. Sean Pereira, Heads of Departments and Divisions, Chairpersons of Statutory Boards, Heads of Divisions and Units, Office of the Premier, media representatives, teachers and students, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 8th National Honors and Awards organized by the Office of the Premier to recognize and celebrate six persons for their selfless contribution and commitment to the development and advancement of Montserrat. The honorees will be presented with an insignia in the following categories. Order of Excellence, Order of Distinction, and Order of Merit. Following the citations, we will ask that our honorees make their way to the stage for the presentations. I would now like to invite the Premier, Mr. Joseph E. Farrell, to, make, to give his remarks. Thank you. As the ceremony is, permit me to accept the protocol that has been established. And I ask you to indulge with me as I ask you to stand for one minute as we celebrate this time of year, our mind goes back and in remembrance of the Right Honorable Justin Hero Castle. We stand for one minute in remembrance of Mr. Castle, please.
Thank you very much. Maybe see there. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight is a moment of great significance for our six awardees, their families, and our country. As Premier of Montserrat, it is my absolute honor to welcome you all to this the eighth National Award Honors and Awards Ceremony. Our country took a very progressive decision in 2013 with the introduction of the National Honors and Awards Act to allow for the conferment of national honors on deserving monstrations. The awards are constituted as a way to recognize deserving monstrations who have contributed in their fields of expertise towards development, the development of this island. Since then, we have celebrated these distinguished individuals on seven different occasions, beginning with the inaugural ceremony in 2014. As a people, we have established our own platform for identifying and bestowing the highest honors, national honors on our peoples. This is particularly pungent when we pause to consider the timing of this ceremony. It is most opportune, particularly during the St. Patrick's celebration, where we reflect on our rich, our rich cultural history and its significance. We cannot lose sight of the plight of Kojo the slave or the heroic actions of the slaves of March 17, 1768, both of which are the foundations of why St. Patrick's activities are so profound to us as a people. Tonight, our national awardees will, en will enter the, the pages of our history as having given meritorious and distinguished service to our beautiful island home. This year, will mark 29 years since the eruption of the Fair Hills volcano, and our country continues to develop. Our progress to date would not have been possible had it not been for the meaningful contributions to this evening's awardees and those who were restored previously. As a people, we focus on rebuilding our island, replacing our basic infrastructures, such as the port, the hospitals, preparing our children for the future through our education system. The preservation of our environment, be it the terrestrial or the marine. The picture of those persons who have labored in these areas over the years to make this country a better place, highlights the stellar contributions of nation building. And I take this opportunity to express heartfelt congratulations to our awardees this evening. You have done yourself good, your families and our country. And I thank you. I also take this opportunity to encourage persons at home and abroad to nominate deserving individuals for consideration for national awards as time goes by. As I close, it would be remiss of me if I did not signal my appreciation to the members of the National Honors and Awards Committee, chaired by Ms. Elsa Morgan, who reviewed and evaluated and eventually submitted the nominees for ratification. Thank you very much. I wish, all, I wish you all a wonderful evening of celebration.
Congratulations once, once again to the awardees. And to all of you, happy St. Patrick's. May God bless us all. Thank you, sir. I would now like to invite to the stage Miss Claricia Rodriguez Chambers, who is the reigning Miss Montserrat 2023. Tonight, Claricia will entertain us in song. I would now like to welcome Miss Chambers to the stage.
and that was the reigning Miss Montserrat, Teen Montserrat, um, 2023 Miss Chambers. We will now have the presentation of awards to our honorees who are being bestowed with the Order of Merit. I would now like to invite the Honorable Leader of the Opposition, Mr. Paul Lewis, to present the awards in this category. Our first honoree this evening is Mr. Reginald Blake, and he's receiving the Order of Merit for his contribution to fisheries. The citation for Mr. Blake will now be read. Citation for Mr. Reginald Blake, Order of Merit. Mr. Reginald Blake's contribution to the development of the fisheries industry in Montserrat and to the promotion of healthy lifestyles and flood security on the island deserves strong recognition. Now over 70 years old, he is currently the longest serving active fisherman on island. Over the past six decades, he has demonstrated a robust work ethic and dedication to the fishing industry. Mr. Blake took up the profession when he was just 12 years old. Eager to learn from the older folk in the northern villages of Montserrat, he embraced the sea with increasing passion. In time, he was able to persuade a resident to build him a boat so that he could launch out on his own. He christened the boat the Golden Slipper, and it was his pride and joy. This proved to be just the springboard he needed, and his enthusiasm, dedication, and work ethic soon paid off. He was able to build another boat, which he named Experience. Mr. Blake seized every opportunity he could to hone his skills in the fishery sector by tapping into the experience and skills of the other more experienced fisher folk. He learned to build his own fish pots and mend his own nets. These skills are worthy of note. The fish pots are locally made fish traps which are used to trap a variety of species and size of fish. Not many folk have the ability to handle this intricate art, a skill that is being lost on the island. He is also one of the very few fisher folk who utilize a sea net in his occupation. This is a sustainable method of fishing and Mr. Blake owns and maintains one of the only two seine nets remaining on the island. Mr. Blake remained stoic and dedicated to his profession despite challenging circumstances. For many years, he had no access to regular transportation to get him from his home to the seaside and back. This did not deter him. He set out very early in the mornings walking to and from the seaside, approximately three miles in each direction. This was to ensure that he could fish and return to shore in a timely manner, so that fish was available for sale to the people who depended on this source of protein. Even though he is now 70 years old, Mr. Blake still endeavors to go fishing daily and sometimes even twice daily. As a fisherman, Mr. Blake has also experienced upheavals that have threatened his career. However, so strong has been his commitment to the industry and his community that he has persevered. During various storms, he has suffered losses of both vessels and fish pots, 
These have taken a major financial toll, but he has rallied on. One of his vessels mysteriously drifted away from Montserrat and ended up in St. Bart's. With the assistance of local and regional authorities, he was able to retrieve the vessel. Such is his dedication and reliability that neither illness nor challenging sea conditions can keep him away from providing fish for his community. Even in rainy weather, Mr. Blake could be found at the boat yard bailing out water from the boat and protecting the equipment on board. And when he was done safeguarding his own boat and equipment, he would move on to help bale water from adjacent vessels. Due to its geographical location, Montserrat is a part of a chain of islands which are affected by tropical storms and hurricanes during the annual Atlantic hurricane season. With no sheltered port or bay, the shoreline is open to the range of the Atlantic and Caribbean seas. The fishing profession is therefore a treacherous and dangerous one. But this does not deter Mr. Blake. When there are storms in the area, he has to manually pull his boat from the sea and relaunch after a storm, each and every time there is a significant storm threat. There are very few persons that make the fishing industry a full-time profession these days. Mr. Blake has been able to do it for over 60 years. And despite his loss of boats and other serious challenges, he has persevered and is still working to provide fresh local fish for residents. Mr. Reginald Blake's outstanding and exemplary dedication perseverance and contribution to the people of Montserrat is worthy of acclaim. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Reginald Blake. We'd now like to welcome Mr. Blake to the stage, please. Our second honoree this evening is Mr. Charles E. White for his contribution in the area of private sanitation and refuse collection. We will now hear the citation for Mr. Charles White. Citation for Mr. Charles Emmanuel White, Order of Merit. Mr. Charles White considers that his entry into the sanitation and refuse removal business was by divine design. In 1986, while considering an offer of appointment as a foreman with a local utility company, he was approached by a local businessman, Mr. Raymond Lewis, and invited to become a partner in a private sanitation and refuse removal business. Being keen on keeping his own business, Charles White decided to turn down the job offer with the utility company and pursue his dream of entrepreneurship. Following the death of Mr. Lewis and the eventual privatization of solid waste collection, Mr. White eventually bought out the business. He continued the refuse collection operations, servicing residents and business premises from Richmond Hill to Woodlands. During the upheavals caused by volcanic activity, 
Mr. White never ceased operations and was called upon by the government of Montserrat to fill the gap caused by the retirement of other refuse collectors. This government contract doubled Mr. White's business operations at a time when he also had commitments to carry out construction work as well as security services to some businesses. However, through rain or shine, Mr. White showed up to work and he gained a reputation for reliability and excellence. When his own trucks went down, he worked tirelessly to acquire needed parts and sometimes he even rented trucks just to ensure that the refuse collection operations continued without disruption and were performed to his usual high standards. Mr. White's commitment to the communities on Montserrat has been demonstrably strong. He could be seen voluntarily assisting with the collection of refuse in various villages on national cleanup days, often working late into the night. The depth of his community spirit has been evidenced in his willingness to assist neighbors or other individuals in picking up items which are not collected by the government refuse services. He has also been known to give this assistance free of cost, where he is aware that persons are unable to pay. Mr. White's dedication to the sanitation and refuse collection service stems from his keen interest in preserving the environment on the island. For over four decades, he has operated on a strong and fundamental belief, which is that maintaining clean and healthy communities is essential in order to avoid incidences of sickness and epidemics caused by environmental neglect. This passion drives his work. Even though the government of Monstrat subsequently awarded a national island-wide refuse collection contract to another operator, Mr. White's service has continued to be in demand. His reliability, thoroughness, and dedication to the community of Monstrat has meant that individuals and businesses continue to call upon him and he continues to respond positively. He has set and maintained a very high standard of operation and his work ethic serves as a model to entrepreneurs. He has consistently shown true community spirit, dedication to his work and to the service of Montserrat. A national award is indeed merited by this outstanding Montserratian. And we'd now like to welcome to the stage, Mr. Charles E. White. a short word from Mr. White. Good night, everyone. I would like to adopt protocol already established. Tonight, I stand here full of gratitude and humility as I accept this esteemed national award. It is truly an honor to be recognized for my contribution to our beloved island. Let me express my sincere appreciation to the officers, the Office of the Premier and the National Honor Award Committee for this prestigious acknowledgement. As I accept this award, I cannot help but reflect on the journey that brought me here. I came, I, I come from a humble 
beginning, and I owe it to my, to, and I owe it much of whom I am, and I want to, to, to have achieved the valuable instilled in me by parents Daniel and Mary White. They taught me the principle of family enterprise and hard work, which have guided me in everything, no matter where life has led me. Carpentry was my first love, but fate took me down the path of masonry. Where I have dedicated years of my life, I won various hats over the years, from being a taxi driver to an orderly at the hospital. Meanwhile, I maintain all my sanitary business. Through it all, I have been blessed with a stable base of customers and unwavering support from my community. I want to take a moment to acknowledge the Almighty God. My Christian faith has been the cornerstone of my journey. It is only through divine favor that I stand here tonight, healthy and able to con continue to work. I am grateful for his guidance and protection throughout the years. Right after Right after God, I must recognize my wonderful wife, Miss Linda May White, for 46 years by my side. She has been my rock and my support, standing by my side through early mornings and late nights, and every challenge we face together. Her strength, her strength and support have been instrumental instrumental in building both my business and our life together. Special thank you to my dedicated workers, particularly Mr. Oswald S. Berry, who commit continue the work in my absence with the same dedication as if I were present. Tyrell Farrell, my co-pilot <laughs> and reliable partner. Beverly West for handling the paperwork and financial aspect diligently, and for my friend, Mr. Placid, my tax man, who kept me compliant, <laughs> and Joseph Sprocket Irish, a man that I could call if my truck didn't start three o'clock in the morning, and he would be right there. Good friend, whose truck is mine whenever I needed it. To my children and my dear friend, Tony Inkicati in England, who have been a source of support in sourcing truck parts for me. Uh, and so much more, your contribution have been invaluable. I never walk for praise. I simply follow the biblic biblical command to do whatever your hands find to do. With all my might, however, it is truly gratif gratifying to receive this recognition while I'm alive. And I sincerely thank thanks for the flowers I'm receiving now alive because too often I have seen many people receive their flowers when they're dead. Yeah. Can't, uh, can't appreciate it. Yeah. I warn them when I die, don't bring the flowers and put on my grave. I'm going to a place where roses will never fade. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, thank you to the Office of the Premier and the National Honor Award Committee for acknowledging the work that I have done to support the health sector in our country. This award is not just for me, but but a test, testament that all of us have something to offer Montreal. May we continue to strive for excellence and contribute to the, the betterment of our beloved island. I thank you. I want to say one thing. I want to say one Just a little humor. When I started out, I was called a garbage man. I am graduating tonight. I am now a sanitary engineer. Thank you, Mr. White. <laughs> Our third honoree this evening is Mr. Kelvin Dubry for his contribution in the field of sports, 
Culture, Arts, and Education. The citation for Mr. Jubri will now be played. Citation for Mr. Kelvin H. Jubri, Order of Merit. Mr. Kelvin H. Jubri has made a most consistent, valuable, and outstanding contribution to Montserrat, particularly in the fields of sports, culture, visual arts, and education, spanning some 40 years. After leaving school, Mr. Jubri had very brief periods of employment in the Royal Bank of Canada and in the Customs and Excise Department, but found his true calling in education. He won a scholarship to the Edna Manley College of the Visual and Performing Arts in Jamaica and pursued a bachelor's degree in fine arts. Returning to Montserrat, he taught art at the Montserrat Secondary School and has successfully steered many students to achieve qualifications in art with the Caribbean Examinations Council. He has inspired students who did not recognize their own talents and some of his protégés have gone on to become visual arts teachers themselves. He currently serves as a regional marker in CSEC Art for the Caribbean Examinations Council. In the field of sports, Mr. Kelvin Jubri has brought acclaim to his home country. Representing Montserrat in cricket for 14 years in the Leeward Island Cricket Tournament, he has the distinction of completing the cricket double, taking over 100 wickets and scoring over 500 runs only the third Montserratian cricketer to have achieved this feat. He has served as a selector for the Leeward Islands team for regional tournaments. Mr. Jubri continues to voluntarily pass on his skills as he coaches young players in the techniques of the game and regularly serves as a cricket commentator. For over four decades, the name Kelvin Jubri has been etched in the annals of Calypso development on Montserrat. Well known as simply Tabu, his Calypso stage name, he has consistently made his mark as a Calypsonian and has been a finalist in Calypso competitions for some 38 years. His lyrically deep calypsos, reflectively engaging globally relevant themes such as environmental conservation, the human condition, and hope for mankind, resonate with audiences at home and abroad. Over the years, Kelvin Tabu Jubri has captured all three local competition titles the Calypso Monarch title once, and the Soka Monarch, and road march titles twice. He generously and humbly acknowledges the musicians and arrangers who have contributed to his success. He continues to willingly share his expertise, writing songs for junior Calypsonians. This multi-talented Montrachon has also shone as a visual artist. For over 40 years, he has honed his skills as a visionary artist in a range of crafts, including screen printing, ceramics, textiles, painting, and sculpture using mixed media. He has mounted exhibitions in the US, the UK, Canada and Jamaica. He has also represented Montserrat at the Caribbean Festival of the Arts, Carifesta, on at least four occasions. Each time, he has drawn much positive attention and exposure to Montserrat and its cultural development. Here at home, Mr. Jubilee's murals on the retaining walls of the Braid's main road, depicting scenes from the lost city of Plymouth, 
help to keep our memories alive despite the volcanic devastation. Mr. Kelvin Jubri's outstanding contribution to Monserrat has also included military service. Joining the Monserrat Secondary School's Cadet Corps as a student, he then continued into the Royal Monserrat Defense Force, rising to the rank of sergeant. Although he withdrew to pursue degree studies overseas, he has inspired others to join the military services. This multifaceted monstration has continued to use his exceptional talents to assist the development of the youth of Monstrat and the region. Furthermore, his robust service in the promotion of the culture and tourism product of Monstrat locally, regionally, and internationally have been both significant and outstanding. We would now like to welcome Mr. Kelvin Tabo Dubery to the stage. I'm trying to find myself. <laughs> okay, um, Excellency, I know the protocol has been established, but I like to say personally to the Excellency first, Mr. and Mrs. Turner, oh, this is the third time I'm seeing you. And you're in Monshot almost two years. It's the third time I'm seeing you. I love you. Don't care about it. If the deputy governor is here, cool, nice, honorable premier. I'm just saying a bit to keep while they set up there, you know, because I wouldn't, I wouldn't really be speaking, you know, it's just the one that sounds too boring, you know. <laughs> yeah, anyway, nice moment. Words can't even express. Um, honorable premier, and I'm not, there's other ministers of government here, like Mr. Paul Lewis. By the way, I don't write speeches. When I talk, I talk from the heart, because I think I'm balanced enough to speak freely in any capacity. My pastor, Bufong, <laughs> my special guest right at the table, and I've seen all my monstrations in front of me, and people from everywhere. It's a beautiful feeling. I never thought of awards, not me. I'm like that caterpillar that grows under the leaf. But if you allow it to grow, it's going to fly away with wings and fly away like a butterfly. That's me. You know what I'm saying? So, MacLeod, if you're ready, I think we celebrated Mother's Day Sunday gone. It, was it in, an England thing? So, I know there are mothers in the house. So, I want to pay special requests to all the mothers in the house right now. And it's from the heart, so don't worry. We never practice. I want to, uh, my student, I thought I'll fuse my students with what I'm doing. I've never done it this way, so I'm trying it this way. Let me recognize three of my fifth form students sitting down here somewhere, my top artists that I'm training for the future. Sammy Sinclair, Juni Pace, and Rose Berlin right down there. Anything I do, I involve my children. So for you.
have seen the tears of a mother suffering from neglect after all she's done for her children how could they turn their backs and forget they don't recall the love that she gave them in the most nurtured time of need the moral standards that she's invested that has enabled them to succeed and now the times are hard they've all gone abroad not a letter of how you do Montserrat I never forget you even I am down and out I never forget you things that would help her children to shine she made sure she taught them well second place was never an option it made her proud to watch them excel rain or shine her arms would be open to greet them when they come home sometimes sadness would overcome her as she waits and no one returns tears of a broken smile when you've lost a child imagine what she's going through Montserrat I never forget you and even I am down never forget you not only to her children she was a mother but for strangers from all around there would always be a hearty welcome and a place for them to rest down some describe her as paradise for her charms and tranquility I had to cry when she asked me this question Why has my children abandoned me? Was my love too strong? Where did I go wrong? Tabu, tell me what can I do? Montserrat, I never forget you And even I am down and out I never forget you Battered and bruised by numerous disasters, but she still managed to survive. Throughout the highlight of all her crises, she never once started to close her eyes. Remaining strong, this mother of substance, to whom we must pay tribute, a true example of resilience. We must all get up and salute. And as she ages with grace, let us sing her praise now and forevermore. Paradise, I will never forget you. And even I am down and I'll always remain so proud I'll never forget you. Thank you, my violinist. We never practice. It is he that is standing up before you that in pursuit of my education, I was in Plymouth and couldn't go up Church Road because the shoe had a sole hole in the bottom of it. And I sat at the roundabout and pondered, where am I going to get a shoe to go to secondary school? Coming from the north, you know? And it was I standing in front of it that a gentleman came to me and said, 
what's your name? I said, Kelvin Jubri. He said, you know me? I said, no. He said, my name is Carlisle Jubri. I know he's dead. But he told me to come to Bata and get the shoes anytime my shoe is finished. <laughs> I can never forget that. <laughs> but firstly, I cannot forget my grandmother because my mother left me eight months and I never saw a mother. And I never saw a father until 1994, till 2004. And I asked him, boy, why you never look after me? And you know what they told me? Them time, them me never give her inverted commas. You know what I mean? I asked him, excuse me, what are you saying, boy? No, I beg you not, I'm a big man. He said, yeah, them time there, I never give her inverted commas. Because children are around, you know, so I can't say what I want to say. And I sat with him all day. At Clapton Pond in England, there was a housing scheme to the back of the church in Clapton Pond. And you know why I stayed with him all day? Because he told me the truth. And the truth shall set him free. So I stayed with him, enjoyed him, and I never went back. Because he told me the truth. It was I who sat at the roundabout again without money to pay for pre-CXC. Pre-Cambridge. -pre -pre Mr. Peter White was principal, and I couldn't hold him up. I sat at the roundabout and I was playing cricket for months at that time as a 16 year old in secondary school. And a gentleman come to me and said, what are you doing here? And I said, boy, I can't pay for the pre-Cambridge. If you never pay for the pre-Cambridge, you can't pass that exam. You can't get no, no O levels, you know that. You have to do pre-Cambridge first. And it was that gentleman called Howard Mead that gave me $268 to pray for my pre-Cambridge, you know. And I went on and got all my, my O levels. All of them. You were a teacher at school at that time. Miss Rita Francis also, I think. <laughs> and I remember Mr. Bruce Ferrara, when he's getting a medal, he used to shoot the gun when I ran at Stoke Park. And I was afraid of that gun that Mr. Bruce, Mr. Bruce Ferrara used to fire. <laughs> and you know, it was him uh, that stand up here to say great. It is he that made me the most I Thank you very much. It is Kingsley Howe that told me he gave me a ride every night. Kingsley Hall gave me a ride every night to go to St. John's. And it is Ravo that saved me from the police in New York. When I went out of his house and tried to get back in for nothing, Ravo said me. Good night. Congratulations again, Mr. Jubri, and thank you to the Honorable Paul Lewis for presenting the awards to the recipients of the Order of Merit. I would like to call um, for return to the stage, Mr. Reginald Blake. He would like to say um, something. I guess he doesn't want to be outdone by the young uns. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. I feel humble to accepting this award tonight. I give God thanks for giving me life and love for the sea, patience for fishing, and strength to persevere. Thanks to my family and past and present members of my fishing team, friends and supporters, who make me what I do special. I am grateful for this award. As Monsat Oles and finest fisherman, I will continue to serve you, the people, as long as God allows. I thank you. I really thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blake. We will now have a musical rendition by Mr. Lyle Braid Bradley sorry, Farrell. He's a young and energetic performer of Munsrashan ancestry, currently residing in Antigua. Lyle Bradley Farrell plays, will play for us the saxophone. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome him to the stage.
was so amazing. I could listen all night. Thank you, Mr. Farrell. We will now move on to the presentation of awards for our honorees or for our honoree who will be bestowed with the order of distinction. I would now like to invite the Honorable Deputy Premier and Minister of Communication, Works, Labor and Energy, Dr. Samuel Joseph to present the award in this category. The honoree for receiving the Order of Distinction will be Mr. Bruce Ferrara, and this will be for his contributions in the area of commerce and entrepreneurship. We will now hear the citation for Mr. Bruce Ferrara. Citation for Mr. Bruce Ferrara, Order of Distinction. Mr. Bruce Ferrara, has made an outstanding and wide-ranging contribution to business and commerce in Montserrat, as well as to community and civil society on this island. Born in Antigua, Mr. Ferrara adopted Montserrat as his homeland since he was a teenager and has resided in Montserrat for the last 55 years. He migrated to Montserrat in 1969 for work purposes, when he was transferred to work at Masonry Products Limited, a sand mining company at Ogaros. He was first employed as a management trainee and at the tender age of 20 became the general manager. His astuteness and creativity anchored him into the realms of business and commerce. In 1977, Mr. Ferrara and some local business partners purchased the company which they renamed Caribbean Sand and Aggregate Limited. He became the managing director and operated this company until 1997 when the volcanic eruptions buried the business. Caribbean Sand and Aggregate Limited, led by Mr. Ferrara, was the very first to export sand from Montserrat. While working at the sand mining company, Mr. Ferrara launched two more companies in Montserrat, Equipment and Supplies Limited in 1978 and Sales and Services Limited in 1984. The former dealt in the sales of motorcycle, spear parts, and continues today with shipping and commercial real estate. The latter company is still the authorized distributor for Toyota on Montserrat. Over the years, he has shared his expertise with various local organizations in the areas of business, sports, and community building. He first served in 1973 as a member of the Junior Chamber, also known as JCs, and was awarded the title of Senator within the organization. He is a past president of the Rotary Club of Montserrat, the Fisherman's Cooperative, the Amateur Radio Society, the Montserrat Chamber of Commerce, and several other organizations. He served as a director on various boards, including the Montserrat Port Authority, Social Welfare, the Bank of Montserrat Limited, and the Montserrat Foundation. In addition, he has served as chairman of the Land Development Authority. Mr. Ferrara is an experienced, agile, and visionary entrepreneur who has survived and thrived despite the volatile business environment in Montserrat. He was one of the first businessmen to establish a real estate center in the north of the island during the volcanic crisis. This center, known as the Ferrara Plaza, located in Braids, provided critical accommodation for key government and business offices at a time when suitable office space was in low supply. Mr. Ferrara has demonstrated 
a resolute commitment to the rebuilding of Montserrat and has given your man service to this island. His record of service to the community and to community organizations is too vast to be enumerated here, but are well known. His financial contributions are also too numerous to mention. In the area of sports, Mr. Ferrara has also made an immense contribution. He was a founding member of the Montserrat Amateur Athletics Association, an organization with international affiliation. During the period 1972 to 2019, Mr. Ferrara variously served as president, vice president, and secretary within this association. Mr. Ferrara is a stalwart with an unwavering zeal for the growth and development of the people of this Emerald Isle of Montserrat. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bruce Ferrara. I'd now like to welcome to the stage Mr. Bruce Ferrara to receive his award the Order of Distinction. the protocol that has already been established, and I'd just like to say, Madam Chairperson and friends. Firstly, I would like to thank the person who nominated me for this award. I still do not know who it is, but if my hunch is correct, he is no longer with us. And whether or not he can hear me tonight is something we do not know. A special thanks to my <clears throat> seven invited guests for supporting me. And I would like to single out <clears throat> two of them. Alain Bourne, my adopted son. And, and Fair Ryan, my adopted daughter. You know, too often we wait until it is too late to give people their flowers. This must stop. Because whether or not we can hear you in, in that final moment, again, that is something we do not know. I'd like to single out another um, person in the audience tonight for her support, and that is Lady Freeland from Antigua. Lady Freeland, your late husband and I started <clears throat> at Masonry Products in Antigua in 1969. A special thanks also to the audience here tonight, those listening on the radio, those on the World Wide Web. And most times when we give praise and thanks, we end with the word Amen. And to make sure no one is sleeping tonight, please join me and sing Amen. 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 Madam Chairperson, let the flowers continue and the other recipients. I guess you were planning to leave that for me, Mr. Ferrara. I'd now like to welcome to the stage the next level dancers. They'll be doing a dance, obviously. They are a 25 member dance group which has celebrated their first anniversary in December 2023 
The group evolved from the MSS dance group with Takira Anderson, Lanisha Morton, and Kiara Gerald being the lead choreographers. Audris Jean-Baptiste is the director. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the Next Level Dancers. Next Level Dancers. We now move on to the presentation of awards for our honorees who are being bestowed with the Order of Excellence. I would now like to invite the Honorable Premier and Minister of Finance and Economic Management to present the awards in this category. Thank you. 
Our first in the category of individuals to be awarded is Mrs. Sarita Francis, who is receiving the Order of Excellence for her service in the field of education, environmental conservation, and public service. We will now hear the citation for Mrs. Sarita Francis. Citation for Mrs. Sarita Francis, Order of the British Empire. Order of Excellence. Mrs. Sarita Francis, OBE, has been a tireless, passionate performer in several areas of endeavor on behalf of the community and country of Montserrat. Her story shines out particularly in the areas of education, environmental and historical conservation, church leadership, and public, NGO, and private sector governance spanning more than five decades. Her community service began at an early age, giving informal assistance with schoolwork to children who needed that extra help. Notable persons in the community, observing her manner of helping these students, encouraged her to pursue a career in education. After training at the Erdiston Teachers Training College and completing a degree in studies at the University of the West Indies, Mrs. Francis returned to Montserrat to teach geography and Spanish at the Montserrat Secondary School. She also assisted in the development of the Leeward Islands debating competition and the School Arts Festival. Her 14-year teaching service at the MSS included nine years as head of department and three years as deputy principal of the Salem Junior Campus. Her experience and training as an educator have underpinned much of her life's work. While still teaching at the Montserrat Secondary School, Mrs. Francis's complementary interest in environmental conservation led to her involvement in the Montserrat National Trust. Here, her contribution has been stellar. She was engaged by the United Nations Development Project, UNDP, in 1993 to lead the development of an environmental strategy for Montserrat. She was then seconded to the Montserrat National Trust to steer the implementation of that strategy. She served effectively as the Environmental Education Coordinator before being appointed as Acting Director of the Trust in 1995. During the height of the volcanic crisis in 1998, Mrs. Francis served as Assistant Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture and one year later she took on the heavy responsibility of Director of Housing. She worked tirelessly to develop emergency and longer-term housing solutions, including the pursuit of funding to address the urgent housing needs on Montserrat. She was keenly aware of the plight of displaced persons from evacuated areas who wished to remain on the island. With Mrs. Francis' track record, dedication, and work ethic, it was no surprise when she was appointed as permanent secretary in the office of the premier in 2001 and later as chief establishment officer in the Department of Administration from 2007 to 2009. In these roles, she was known for setting high standards and for encouraging and motivating staff to excel and achieve successful careers for themselves. Mrs. Francis continued to soar, bolstered by her own attributes of thoroughness, flexibility, strong commitment to public service excellence, and to national development. She led the public sector reform program, which focused on developing modern public service management techniques across the service. In 2009, she became the first deputy governor of Montserrat, a position she held until 2012. She forged new ground in setting up and implementing the office of the deputy governor with functions and structures aligned to the new constitution of Montserrat. 
keen on improving the operations of the public service, Mrs. Francis championed a number of new and successful initiatives, especially to improve the interface of the public service with the public it served. Despite her heavy workload in the public service, Mrs. Francis's voluntary work commitment remained strong. She has maintained her involvement with the Montserrat National Trust for over 40 years, serving in various leadership roles. In 2013, after concluding her stint as Deputy Governor, she was appointed Executive Director of the Montserrat National Trust. In this role, she has managed to attract projects in biodiversity management and archive development worth in excess of Eastern Caribbean dollars, two million, over the past five years. A number of young persons have been employed and equipped with skills in conservation and the work of the trust in conservation and education has expanded. Her endeavors continue to center the Montserrat National Trust and the Montserrat Museum major tourism and local learning facilities, showcasing the products and spreading awareness of the island. Under her direction, the botanical gardens have been expanded and the digitization of irreplaceable historical documents and artifacts going back to the 1600s is ongoing. Historic sites and buildings have been surveyed, photographed, and documented. A service-oriented person, Mrs. Sarita Francis's tireless dedication to the community has thrust her into local, regional, and international membership of various boards and committees, where she has served as a strong ambassador for Montserrat. She has been president of both the local and the Regional Guild of Graduates of the University of the West Indies and served as a member of the Council of the University in that role. She is a member of the Caribbean Conservation Network of the UK Overseas Territories and also of the Council of the UK Overseas Territories Conservation Forum. She has also served in the management boards of a number of other organizations, including church, financial institutions, tourism, environmental, education, culture, and the Electoral Commission. She has coordinated the documentation and publication of at least two booklets on popular medicinal plants. She also co-authored the book, Birding in Montserrat. In 2012, her contributions to environmental conservation and public service on Montserrat were recognized by Her Majesty the Queen, who bestowed upon her the award of the Officer of the Order of the British Empire, OBE. It is fitting that the government and people of Montserrat now accord this daughter of Montserrat due recognition for her exemplary and stellar service to our beloved island over the past five decades. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Sarita Francis. Good evening, everyone. I acknowledge the protocol that was so ably established by the Master of Ceremony, Mrs. Lorraine Lewis. It is with great humility that I stand to accept this award from the Local Awards Committee, the Government and People of Montserrat. Firstly, I would want to thank Almighty God for his guidance, 
his strength and his inspiration over the many seasons of my life. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our sight. Permit me to congratulate the other recipients of this year's awards. Gratitude is also extended to the person or persons who thought it fit for me to be nominated and honored at this time. I also extend gratitude to the awards committee and all those who played a role in organizing this evening's ceremony. I was born during the decades, the decade where months rations of all classes were given the opportunity to vote in general elections. It was also a decade when a number of months rations were leaving this island to pursue employment in Curacao, Aruba, USA, and England. As a consequence, many of us in our generation were raised by our grandparents. And that nurturing and support shaped us to be strong, independent, and determined persons that we are today. I pay tribute to the women including my maternal and paternal grandmothers, who stayed behind and who made great sacrifices to raise their grandchildren. Our parents worked overseas in harsh conditions and sacrificed to ensure that their remittances were sent to build houses and shelter and provided a better living condition for all of us here in Montserrat. We owe them a debt of gratitude. My sister Marianella, who traveled here from the UK to be with me today, and my, my younger brother Kenton, deceased, and I often spoke about the love, discipline, sacrifice, and the moral grounding provided by our grandmother and Piper, who raised three of our own children and then had to raise three grandchildren. My parents returned to Montserrat when I was 17, and I pay tribute to my mother, Annie Lassie Weeks, who was my greatest support and, cheer and cheerleader until her passing in 2005. She was a large part of an army of strong women on Montserrat, on whose shoulders many of us here in this audience stand today. Although many of them did not have um, a secondary education, some of them only had a standard three level education, they were our homework helpers. They were our Sunday school teachers, our Bible class teachers, guidance counselors, our bankers, our nurturers. The Montserrat I grew up in was built on the dreams and sacrifice of many persons and groups who wanted to make a difference in this country. During the 70s, it was an area of robust building enterprise mingled with volunteerism, private sector and public sector initiative, which united all of us to form organizations such as the Montserrat National Trust, the Montserrat JCs, the Montserrat Building Society, the Montserrat Golf Club, the Montserrat Rotary Club, just to name a few. I benefited from being a member of one of these organizations, the Montserrat National Trust, and that has guided me. The experiences that I gained from volunteering assisted me throughout my career. I learned about accounting, I learned about project writing and so on. So I encourage those of us who are still here, please volunteer with an organization. We all need to work together to make this a better country. We must find the same enthusiasm that our foreparents found. We must 
not listen to the critics, the naysayers. We must not allow them to de uh, deter us from being positive and making a contribution, a solid contribution to this country. All of us lovers of Montserrat, whether you are from Montserrat, you were born here, you've come here, you've returned here, all of us must join to raise this country from the ashes. It is not a competition, but all must subscribe to building a community of built on part partnerships, determination to create a wholesome Montserrat. This award that I'm receiving today, I share with all those who had a part to play in molding and supporting me through all the many stages of my development. My parents, my sister Marie, who's here, my devoted son, Dion, who has been the apple of my eye, and I want to say how proud I am of you for the man you've become and the father you have been to, your, to my, three, my two grand, grand, granddaughters, Diane and Jenny. My sister in Claudette, you've been there praying for me all along. My, I want to pay also tribute to my late Uncle Fred and my late Aunt Jane. Uncle Fred's wife, Matilda, is here witnessing this. My cousins, my friends, my pastor, my church family who continue to support me, my many colleagues throughout the many years of service to the government and people of Montserrat, the Montserrat National Trust Council, members, friends, colleagues, volunteers, I have benefited from all of your selfless contributions. Many of my friends have come from abroad to witness the ceremony, to my friend Anne Granger and Tony Tankai. You have both been partners in a number of ways, from flower show exhibitions to all other support. All I have to do is to call on you and you're there for me. Again, most importantly, and, and certainly not least, I give honor to God and all praise and glory for his wings under which I continue to shelter. To all of you this evening who have played a part in the ceremony, let us continue to build Montserrat. I thank you. Mrs. Sarita Francis. Our second honoree this evening is Dr. Yvonne Weeks. She will be receiving the, her award for her service and achievements in the field of education, culture, and the arts. We will now hear the citation for Dr. Yvonne Weeks. Citation for Dr. Yvonne Weeks, Order of Excellence. Dr. Yvonne Weeks has made an outstanding contribution to the development of Montserrat and ensured that this tiny island achieved international acclaim through her work and representation over decades. Born in England to Montserratian parents, Dr. Weeks was raised in Montserrat and attended the Montserrat Secondary School. She pursued undergraduate studies at Middlesex University, earning a BA in English and Drama in 1980 and a Certificate in Education. Later, she earned an Advanced Certificate in Voice and Speech from the Central School of Speech and Drama, all in the UK. Over the next seven years, Dr. Weeks taught drama and English in the UK, gaining practical skills in drama and theatre, 
including roles in award-winning stage plays and drama documentary films. She also became a published author. With such a strong foundation and experience in teaching, writing, and theater, Dr. Weeks returned to Montserrat in 1987, eager to share her skills and experience with the community at home. She taught English language and literature at the Montserrat Secondary School and directed the MSS Drama Club, which performed at the first secondary school's drama festival in Trinidad. She won the Outstanding Directing Award. She also established the Rainbow Theatre Company, directing several Caribbean plays, which performed locally and in St. Thomas and Nevis. In 1994, Dr. Weeks was appointed as the island's first director of culture. In this posting, she made valuable inroads to the development of cultural awareness and enhancement of the cultural product of the island. The steel pan program in primary schools was improved by intensive workshops with experienced panists and several MSS students were exposed to a performing arts summer camp at the St. Augustine campus of the University of the West Indies in Trinidad. Together with the late Mr. Leslie Thomas, the school's art festival was promoted and expanded. She also undertook the development of a cultural policy for Montserrat with full stakeholder consultation. Unfortunately, this was truncated by the volcanic crisis in 1995. The onset of volcanic activity did not deter Dr. Weeks's drive to use cultural avenues to benefit the people, especially those who were displaced and living in shelters. Between 1995 and 1996, rallying prominent cultural artists, she developed a traveling company under the theme, God Will Find a Way, providing spiritual comfort and uplifting entertainment to the residents in churches, schools, and under tents. In addition, while schools were temporarily displaced, Dr. Weeks garnered the input of local expertise and ran an arts camp for children, engaging them in singing, drama, storytelling, and visual arts. Due to the increase in volcanic activity, Dr. Weeks relocated to Barbados in 1996. She worked as theater arts coordinator of the Barbados Community College for 17 years and later as a lecturer in theater and arts education at the University of the West Indies. Embracing the opportunity for further professional development, she earned an M.Ed. in educational leadership and a postgraduate diploma arts and cultural enterprise management before completing studies leading to a PhD in education in 2016. Despite living in Barbados, Dr. Weeks has used her expertise to undertake an analysis of the language arts department at the Montreux Secondary School and serves on the board of management of the Montreux Community College. A visit home is characterized by poetry readings, workshops, speeches, and distributing books to schools. As an arts educator, academic, and writer, 
Dr. Weeks has been intentional in promoting Montserrat, both regionally and internationally. Whether in Grenada or Colombia, she sees each invitation as an opportunity to spread awareness of the island to audiences of hundreds, and in some cases, of thousands. A film, Volcano Baby, which she wrote and directed, was commissioned by the United Nations International Organization for Migration, IOM, highlighting Montserrat as a model for other countries impacted by environmental disaster. Through the renowned UK publishing house, PayPal Tree Press, she continues to present readings from her book, Volcano. She seizes these opportunities to engage with Montserratians, building national pride and identity throughout the diaspora. On a regional level, Dr. Weeks has also made a strong contribution to educational development. She was a key resource person in the development of the CSEC Theatre Art Syllabus for the Caribbean Examinations Council and in the training of teachers across the region to deliver the syllabus. In 2019, Poetry Collection Nomad is a reference source for creative writing courses focused on disaster writing at several universities. Her play, Blue Soap, was published in a Caribbean anthology, Emancipation Moments, in 2010, and is currently on the CSEC Theatre Arts syllabus. Dr. Weeks continues to promote the development of young Montrachian writers to this day. She ensured the inclusion of young and unpublished Montrachian writers in her most recent anthology, Disaster Matters, Disasters Matter. She facilitates regular workshops with a small group of young poets in Montserrat with the goal of producing an anthology with funding from the Montserrat Arts Council. It must be noted that in 2004, Dr. Weeks, a Montserratian, won the prestigious Frank Collymore Literary Award for her memoir, Volcano, a literary award which rewards writers in Barbados. She was the recipient of a Funky Man Award for her contribution to culture and later at the Montreux Secondary School's reunion in 2012, she was awarded for her contribution to education at the Montserrat Secondary School. Her students remember her balancing both jobs as director of culture and teaching them English by the picket friends of Alveston House during a crucial time of the volcanic crisis. Dr. Weeks's drive, tenacity, and energies has made her an exceptional ambassador for Montserrat, and the quality and extent of her contribution to the development of our people and educational institutions is worthy of acclaim. I'd now like to welcome to the stage Dr. Yvonne Weeks.
So a protocol has been established. Brothers and sisters, family, friends, Manswashans, people from the diaspora, just, I'm just overwhelmed by this award. You know, people thank God all the time, and very often it's a cliche, but I really do thank God because when the volcano erupted in 95 and I left in 96, I left for one year and found myself 28 years later still living in Barbados. And the first few years I felt bitter, angry, out of sorts. And then I remember the story of Joseph who was sold into slavery and many years later was able to save his brothers and their family from famine. And so for me, when I was younger, I remember, and my sister Pearl, who is here, reminded me that when I was asked, what did I want to do with my life in sixth form? Very angry that my parents took me back to England. The only answer I had was that I wanted to make a difference in the world. I didn't know whether I was gonna be a lawyer or a teacher. I didn't know whether I was gonna be a writer. In fact, I recall someone saying, um, you wouldn't be a writer. <laughs> and, um, and I said, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a difference in the world. And very often, we can remember all the wrongs. We can remember all the hurts and the disappointments and we keep a record of wrongs. We don't really keep a record of the things we've done. So the truth of the matter is when I received the letter from the Premier's office, I burst into tears because I thought, what are they honoring me for? I live in Barbados. But then I took stock, I checked myself and I remembered that my intention was very clear. And it became even more clear when my two grandchildren, when my first granddaughter Nina was born, she's here with me, and my grandson Tyler was born. I was absolutely clear that when they walked the streets of Montserrat, whenever that happened, and this is their first visit, that people must say to them, me remember your mother, she used to teach me literature. I hated literature. I remember your mother. I joined the drama club so that I could get close to all the girls because she used to run the drama club. I want them to walk in Montserrat, their ancestral home, with pride and with dignity and with confidence that though they may have been born in another island, Barbados, that they are Montserratian to the bone. And so for me, this honor comes with a lot of um, pride, but also humility, because everything I've done and everything I do, I did it without any desire for award, reward, compliment, commission, praise. And in a way, the volcano gave me the opportunity to be surrounded by some very critical people in my life who, you know, with 270,000 people, you better be good at what you do because no one's going to pay attention to you. Um, and even last year when I went to Colombia and Venezuela and read to thousands, I mean literally thousands of people from my book Volcano and from Nomad and from Pandemic Moments, which I wrote with the late Professor Sir Howard Fergus. People had never heard of Montserrat, but they were just desperately um, trying to figure out, is it in Spain? And then they went on the map and they were like, oh, there's a volcano. And almost every reading, even with people who never understood the English, I had a translator in Spanish, they wanted to hear more and more about Montserrat. And I am really pleased and proud to say that just two weeks ago, a uh, university in the States 
wants to translate volcano fully into Spanish. I am grateful, <laughs> yes. I'm extremely grateful to the Premier's office and the committee, to those who nominated me or to the person who nominated me and just to the organizers of this event. It's been really a tremendous experience to have my niece shock me at the seaport arrive unexpectedly. Safina, thank you so much for coming. I love you. Coretta, your presence here is important to me. Your father was important to me. Your uncle David Edgecombe, we spoke every week about my growth in theater so that I could have a month's ration regional presence thanks to your uncle. I'll never forget him. My friend Caroline Jemmett, we went to MSS together in 1960 <clears throat> and we are still friends and she's here with her grandson. My sister Pearl, my grandchildren, my son and his wife are not here but trust me, I had to get, I had to wrangle permission out of them to bring <laughs> their children on the ferry. <laughs> and to everyone who taught me at MSS, to every relative that gave me a five pound when I was at university, to my mother, Katrin, Louisa, Cadieli from St. John's Weeks, who had sometimes two, three jobs to make sure I got my first degree. I am grateful. I will continue to work. I will continue to make you proud. I will continue in my writing, in my speaking engagements, um, in my academic work, and in my teaching to let everybody know. Because they often ask me, Is people still live in Monsat? They say, how oh, you mean? What do you mean people still live in Amonsat? So I'm grateful for this award. Um, none of us deserve anything we get, but at the same time, it's an amazing feeling to be honored and to be recognized. I will continue to work. And you will see me in September. Come and have things to do. I'm grateful, love you all, take care. And to all the awardees, Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Weeks. And I would now like to invite the entire audience to please stand and collectively give a rousing round of applause to all of our awardees for their selfless contribution and commitment to the development and advancement of Montserrat. Thank you. I would now like to invite Mr. Earl Hustler Brown to perform a special vocal rendition. Mr. Brown is a former Calypso monarch of Montserrat. He's best known for his vocally rich Calypsos to include hits such as Solidarity and Behold. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Earl Hustler Brown. Yes, 
Jesus. Thank you. That was Mr. Earl Hustler Brown brings back lots of memories of Sturge Park. Who remembers those days? I would now like to invite the PS within the office of the Premier, Mrs. Daphne Castle, to deliver the vote of thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome her to the stage. Your Excellency the Governor and Mr. Tucker, Honorable Premier, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Ministers of Government, Honorable Leader of the Opposition and other Honorable Members of the Legislative Assembly, National Honorees, Specially Invited Guests, Listeners on the Virtual Platforms and Radio, Good Evening. It is my privilege to present the vote of thanks as we conclude the official segment of this evening's ceremony. On behalf of the Honorable Premier, the Honorable Leader of the Opposition, and the Planning Committee, I would like to express appreciation to all those involved in the planning and staging of the 8th National Honors and Awards Ceremony. Father Joel St. Rose for the prayer, his words of blessing and setting the tone for the ceremony. Honorable Joseph Farrell, Premier, for your remarks, emphasizing the selfless service and contributions of the honorees. Honorable Premier, assisted by Dr. Honorable Samuel Joseph, Deputy Premier, and Honorable Paul Lewis, Leader of the Opposition, for the conferment of national honors. Congratulations to the six honorees. The Right Honorable Sarita Francis, OBE, OE. The Right Honorable Dr. Ivan Weeks, OE. Mr. Bruce Ferrara, OD. Mr. Reginald Blake, OM. Mr. Charles E. White, OM. And Mr. Kelvin Dubry, OM, whose Extraordinary accomplishments, high standards, and service to Munsrat have been accorded national recognition. Thank you to the members of the National Honors and Awards Committee, Ms. Elsa Morgan, Chairperson, Mr. Eugene Skerriot, Mr. Adrian Galloway, Mrs. Zagata Aspin, Mrs. Venita Kaby, Ms. Beatrice Fenton, and Ms. Edith Dubry for their evaluation of the public nominations and, of course, their recommendations and the selections as displayed this evening. Ms. Edith Dubry and Ms. Anne Marie Dio, who willingly agreed to prepare the radio briefs and official citations, respectively. We also salute the contributions of Mrs. Camille Thomas Gerald, Territorial Song Rendition, <laughs> Ms. Clarissa Rodriguez Chambers, Miss Teen 2023, for assisting with the presentation of the medals, entertainment throughout the evening by the Emerald Chameos Masquerades, Miss Teen 2023. Mr. Lyle Bradley Farrell, Next Level Performers, and Earl Hustler Brown, who displayed impressive talents, adding a special touch to the evening. We also record immense thanks for the technical expertise and collective inputs of the members of the planning committee who demonstrated true collaboration across the departments. Dennis Silkert from the Office of the Premier, Chairperson, Tanisha Christopher from the Office of the Deputy Governor, Michelle Castle, Ministry of Education, and Brenda Lindsay, Supreme Court. Thank you. 
the citation presenters, the Office of the Premier Staff, in particular our support staff, Jodine Mead, Junicia Irish, and Lindsay Hoyt, ZJB and GIU technicians, the ushers, RMDF escorts, stage manager and crew, light and sound technicians, interior designers, graphic designer, photographer, caterers, and the management and staff of the Cultural Center. We also um, signal due recognition to Mrs. Lorraine Lewis, who has diligently volunteered as host of the National Honors and Awards Ceremony for now seven ceremonies. We say a huge thank you for your continued commitment and professionalism in executing your duties. And we just want to um, provide to you, Ms. Lewis, um, a token if you can come forward. <laughs> and then notably, we extend gratitude to all of our invited guests including the teachers and students, also to Munstratians and friends of Munstrat at home and abroad who are watching via the online video stream and also listening on ZJB. Thank you to all for joining us on this occasion of national significance. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Castle. And now we've come to the end, ladies and gentlemen. And um, on behalf of the committee, I would like to invite all of the awardees, your guests, and um, anyone else who is actually interested. There's a purpose-built photo booth in the foyer, and you're more than welcome, please, to go there and have your photo taken. There's a professional photographer who will be there on, on hand to take your pictures. So good evening and please get home safe. Thank you. Good night. It's rebuilding time.